Hello, hello, and welcome to another screencast in the Cells and Systems Unit. Uh, today we're going to take a look at single-celled and multi-celled organisms. What's the difference? And the, the name alone implies a difference. Okay, so let's dive right in here. This is a very short topic here. The variety of organisms here on planet Earth is incredible if you think about it. We have environments across the planet that support such an array of life that it's baffling about what we can actually see on this earth. Okay? Think about what you can find just by walking through, let's say, the coolies in a summer day. That's incredible. That's incredible. Not to mention like the Amazon jungle or deep below the ocean. There is a huge variety. And that variety we see a large difference in single celled versus multi celled organisms. For example, the smallest organisms known to scientists are something called mycoplasma. Okay. Now this image here uh, I probably uh, made it a little bit larger, uh, so it's hard to see exactly what the magnification is. But if you were to look at this image in your textbook, as it's shown in your textbook, the textbook page magnifies it by 18,000 times. 18,000 times. That is massive. These mycoplasma are a single-celled organism, and they are alive. Where do they live? I have no idea, but they're tiny. And on the other end of the spectrum, the largest organism on the planet, clearly multicellular, is the blue whale. 30 meters in length. 30 meters. How big is 30 meters, you might ask? Well, that's roughly 100 feet. A bus, a city bus, is 40 feet. You're looking at two and a bit city buses long, weighing 100 to 150 tons. That is massive, and the only place for that organism to survive is, of course, in our oceans. So. Like, how do these guys survive that big? That's huge. That's huge. Some other small, uh, super, some other super small introductions, sorry. Uh, if you take a look at this one, we have here penicillin resistant bacteria. That's little bacteria that actually uh, won't react when you take uh, back, uh, penicillin. Uh, this creates a penicillin uh, uh, allergy sometimes and makes it very difficult to treat. This is the flu, the influenza virus. That's what it looks like under a microscope. Wouldn't be what you think it was, but single-celled nonetheless. These are called sea sparkles. Why? Because they light up and they sparkle. They use bioluminescence and they're found in deep parts of the ocean. A single-celled organism. And this funny blue-looking guy? That's a paramecium. Parahusium, a paramecium. Now, we're going to take a look at paramecium a little closer in just a second. So some organisms are called unicellular, as the ones I just showed you, the viruses and the, and the sea sparkles, okay? which means they're made up of only one type of cells. Almost everything that we look at under the microscope are called uh, microorganisms, and they're single, unicellular, such as like the mycoplasma. Anything else that's got more than one cell, we call it multicellular, made up of two or more cells. Plants, animals, everything else is multicellular. Now, the benefit of being a multicellular organism is that you can have a, a little bit um, more functioning, so to speak. Okay, Because unlike unicellular organisms, multicellular organisms benefit from being um, able to live in a wide variety of environments. If you're a unicellular organism, you've got one environment to live in, that's it. You can't move between it. Multicellular organisms can grow very large. They can get their energy from a wide variety of foods. They have very complex bodies, very complex, and they have specialized body functions. If you are more multicellular organisms, you are able to do all these things. If you're unicellular, you can't live in a wide variety. You don't grow to be very big. You get your food source from one thing because that's all you can handle. Your body is not so complex. It's maybe like you know, the parts of a cell, organelles, and that's it. And they're not highly specialized. I mean, they do their own thing, but they're not highly specialized. So being a multicellular organism certainly has its advantages. Here's an example of a, multi, or a unicellular organism. This is called an amoeba. Now, an amoeba has what's called pseudopods, and it would be this thing right here and right here. Okay, These are foot-like projections. And the way this amoeba works is it kind of blobs in one direction here and there and allows itself to move. And it uses these foot-like projections to move in one direction or another or to collect food. 
This other critter that we've talked about before, a paramecium, uses tiny little hairs. and You can just barely make them out in the top uh, left part of the picture on the paramecium. They're tiny hairs called cilia. And these cilia are actually controlled by the paramecium, which doesn't have a brain. And each hair beats to allow it to move through the water. Okay, they're usually found in ponds. Okay, and these little cilia will just beat like crazy, like little wave-like uh, projections, and allow this paramecium to move through the entire uh, environment. Okay, so just two different ways that single-celled organisms can move around. Notice that you don't get a lot of variety in them, but they do have different ways that they can move, which is kind of cool. Okay, so that's the the basic rundown of unicellular and multicellular organisms. Any questions or concerns, please post it on the on the blog or ask in class. Thanks very much.